we've gone through a computer code example that was about as simple as I could make it to illustrate as clearly as possible the main concepts of programming. Now let's look at a couple of, uh, of code segments, a couple of um, pieces of computer code that are more like what actually happens in the world. So this first one is um, uh, a C++ example. And um, to tell you the truth, I have no idea what it does. I searched the web for it, I got this example. If I was to take a long time and really dig into it and read a lot about it and play with it and look at it in the context of the other functions that it's part of, this by the way is a function, just like the function that I showed you before. Um, if I was to do a lot of work and study hard, I would be able to figure out what this does. Um, but notice it's nothing like the other one where I can just look at it and read the words and pretty much get the idea of what it does. Even basic programs. I don't want to give you the idea that you can open up any basic program and read it either. Basic programs in the end end up looking complicated like this as well. Um, but you can notice some things that we described in here that are still there on the top. I don't have line numbers here, but on the very top we have the name of the function. And <laughs> in typical programmer fashion, it doesn't even read like a word, right? I mean, the, fu the name of the function says what it does, but um, do paste dib, who knows even what that means. And there's a bunch of other stuff on that line as well that is more, um, uh, more arcane and harder to understand. So this, this, this uh, code chunk really shows you more, well, it shows you something about programming, but it also shows you something about programmers. This kind of programming language is very terse. This kind of programming language is very efficient, but it's also very hard to read unless you've spent a lot of time reading this kind of code. Um, so this is a more normal example, and you'll notice that there's all sorts of things going on here, um, uh, but those things really do break down into the same categories. You can see here, for example, there's a word if. There's a familiar word. It's down one, two, three, four lines, the word if, so that's a piece of logic. And you can imagine, whether you understand it or not, that this is saying if what? This is the condition of the if. And then notice under the if, there's an open bracket and a, and a closed bracket. That open bracket and closed bracket um, define the block of the if. Just like before, I had a, an if and an end if. That defines a block of, of code. Or, uh, yeah, a block of code that's going to happen, run, if that if is true. Okay, so even though this is hard to read, it's still parsable. It's still possible to, to, to see the main constructs. Now notice at the very end there's a closed bracket and at the very beginning there's an open bracket. This defines the scope of the function. This defines all the lines that are part of that function. So once again, we have something that is, um, uh, that is different. It uses brackets instead of words to say what, when things begin and when things end. But the same function is happening. And you could write this code just as, as, well, you could write this code in any other language, probably, any other mature language that allows you to do all these, that allows you to do the basic things that programs do. Okay, so that's a, that's a, a realistic chunk of code, and what I want you to take from that is that um, different languages use more and less arcane, arcane meaning kind of cryptic, you know, hard to understand, hard to, hard to really know unless you've studied them, ways of saying essentially the same thing. All right, let's look at this example. And this example is assembly code. Assembly code is one of those low-level languages that I talked about. So remember, I said that there are high-level languages that, um, that, that programmers actually type in. And the examples I've shown you so far are both high-level languages. The Visual Basic as well as the C++ um, example are high-level languages. Computer programmers go in there and type them. And then those high-level languages are what's called compiled into low-level languages. And the compiled version of the, of, the, of the code is what the computer actually runs on. Now, <laughs> interestingly, this is yet one level above the code that the computer actually runs on. But it's good enough to show you that it's a set of very simple commands like push, move, pop, um, LEA, I don't know what that means, add, subtract. These are all the, these are all the basic, small, low-level commands that the program runs on, and each of those commands has certain um, data that go along with it, and that's what the computer actually runs on. So either of those programs that I showed you will be compiled into something like this, and then this will be used to generate the thing that the computer actually runs on. So there's a lot of levels of, of programming. 
inside my program I create high level functions that call lower level functions but even my lowest level function is still above the level of this assembly code and even this assembly code is above the level of what's called machine code and machine code is actually what the computer runs on so one line of my high level function could be literally millions and millions and millions of lines of machine code that the computer actually executes and of course the computer executes those lines of machine code ultra fast right uber fast so fast that there would that 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 it makes sense to write in the high level language and believe that it it's running in real time each of those lines because it as far as the computer is concerned it's so fast that um or as far as the program is concerned it's so fast that i don't even need to care that all these very very small commands are running okay that's how computer that's what computer code looks like